you kind of look when you're doing you know, you've, you've been in various kind of clubs and parties and I know you wrote about being abused on a beach mm. just for taking photographs for a wooden for uh, an interior that's like lifestyle magazine. Yeah, I was shooting for Coast magazine and I was called a paedophile twice and told to bugger off by various people and then people have become a lot more suspicious I think of, of the use of photography and uh, uh, and where the photographs are going to end up and, and things. But um, yeah, so that's, yeah, I'm sort of getting depressed here now. <laughs> I, money's, the budgets have been squeezed, money's not coming in, I'll, I'll people sort of me, abuse me on the street. Let me bring you back to something. Let me paint a picture of uh, the, the mid 90s when everything was golden well, and Well, no, the, the mid 80s, everything was golden. The mid 90s, right, yes. it was. It I, I, I was right. definitely born five years, either too late or too early, I can't work it out. I missed all the Photoshop stuff at university and at school, but then I also missed all the profitable corporate work that bought Zed Nelson's house and I'm only four years later. Well he was talking about that house this morning actually oh, good, and he good. was also talking about the work he did for it. Mm. But it's interesting because I, although you can paint a picture of, of you, you are quite a maverick in the way in which you you take pictures, you're a maverick in your approach to it I think, and yet one of your pictures was used in a wheat bit Yes. Yeah. Which is, you know, it, it's that combination of commercial and actually staying true to your own personal vision. Yeah, I mean, people, commercial worlds, contact me when they want an image to be real, quirky, maybe a sense of humour, and they say, do exactly what you do, but we're going to have to cast everyone, locate everything, yeah. you know, approve everything. And how does that work? I mean, does it work? I hire an assistant oh. who's technically on the board. There's a, there's a place called, oh, I don't know, the, but there's a Hasselblad that comes with a person to operate. Right, that'll be for so, photo class. Yeah, so um, perhaps, uh, and, and the art director tells me what they want, and I say, that's possible, and then right. I talk to my assistant and say, is that possible? Right. And they say yes, and I go and say yes. So right. uh, it works that way. So I'm just there as an eye, really. I mean, on one shoot, um, I didn't even press the shutter. It was done from the space bar of the of the laptop, but yeah, I was looking at the images. Well, once. Yeah. But once so you it's felt all okay about it, as long as you were looking at the image of getting paid. Yeah, because once it's in, once the camera's in place, the cars where it's ought to be, and uh, the models are doing what what they do. I, do, I think whoever presses the button, um, you know, isn't necessarily the one who's getting the fee. So. Okay. Yeah. So. With the personal projects, do you feel that that's kind of something that you're doing to try and get that kind of work, or is that something that the, the work side of it just kind of happens without you realising or making very much effort, or are you out there seeing people all the time? Um, not so much, well, uh, I mean I do pound the pavement still, but portfolios um, generally are called in at the last moment, so your, your website's the shop window. And I don't, I don't leave the house much anymore. There's no reason to because you can't. You don't need to deliver film, or yeah. uh, you don't need to see people as much. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, email out, post things, and but occasionally I do turn up in person. So I hope it's not too disappointing. But the, it's an interesting point because you know what we, I've written in the magazine about the loneliness of it, and I don't want to bring you down again by any means. But, I am lonely. But, but <laughs> it, it, is, it is a lonely profession and also the area you're working in is the hardest of all I think because we've spoken a lot about now a lot of the photographers are relying on teams if you're shooting in fashion or if you're, you know, if you're shooting an ad shoot, commercial shoot. You'll be working in a, a small team to a very large team but the kind of work you do really does require you to go out on the bus or the train and just, as you say, walk the streets to find yeah. images. Yeah, I, do, I mean I'm not great with company anyway. I think photography is, does attract solitary individuals. So, um, you know, I, I was at a PR event last night and uh, there's something wrong with a room full of photographers. It shouldn't happen. Think, well, they're not, uh, they're not the best when they come together, are no, they? No, they're not. So there, there must be a punchline as to what do you call a room full of photographers, but maybe we can have a competition about maybe, that. Maybe, maybe. We'll uh, run that off the back of your diary. So I think, I think um, I think I deal with the loneliness well, uh, as long as you're being productive. I mean, if things are, if money's coming in, you're taking good pictures, the highs are high. Yeah. If the two aren't working, the lows are low. There's very little middle ground, but I'd rather be experiencing those two extremes than, you know, a more trivial 
perhaps trivial is the wrong word, I don't want to put people down, but they're more mundane at this And do you, do you think by writing the diary that you're now doing in the magazine, I know you used to have a blog before, mm. and you, you, you tweet regularly and a, in a very humorous way, but do you feel that actually having the diary has changed the way you're looking at the way you're working? Has it made you kind of take a step back or...? And not, not the way I take pictures, but the, perhaps the approach to, to behaving right. um, has improved. The impro I think. It's improved. Uh, I mean, I'm embracing it as well. Um, ten years ago, it would have been considered, when I was at IPG, it would have been considered vulgar to... I mean, we shared a, a building with Network Photographers, another great agency. We all drank in the same pub, but we weren't... We didn't talk to them, and we, we didn't think about that. So we kept, we had, had a very insular way of working. I'm just losing my thread here. Where are we? Uh, we were talking about well, we're talking about the, the whole thing of actually working okay. with other people and having the way in which you work. But that so, sense of community, yeah. you think? So is we, we weren't enough. encouraged to meet um, outsiders, I suppose, to call them. And now there are people. Um, I heard a story. Laura Panic, a great young photographer, when she was picking up her World Press Award rang every photographer she admired staying in the hotel and said come down to the bar for a drink and I applaud that um, but it's taken me a long time to sort of embrace that approach which do I think, am doing now. Do you think other photographers working in, in, in your area are, are doing a similar thing? I mean is there a, uh, I mean, do you know each other? You know, we, we talk about Z, you talk about Harry Byrne and all those and those other people. Uh, is, is there a kind of community where you're, you're kind of helping each other? Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a core of friends I have, all more successful friends that I uh, that I call upon, such as Ed and uh, Harry and uh, Tom uh, when he's around. But uh, I, th I think we have to be out there. And uh, when I say out there, it could be tweeting or Facebooking or you know just just having a profile. And uh, and, and the diary has focused my my approach. It wouldn't be a good diary if, you know, I didn't do anything for two weeks. So I am I am getting out more and, and things are coming from it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's not good. necessarily good things, but I just said things. Um, um, 